Hey there, this is your orchestration tutor, Thomas Goss, and um, I thought that we would have a separate, um, a separate little segment on orchestration manuals. Okay, now I think I already talked to you about uh, Sam Adler's study of orchestration. Um, if you haven't seen the other clip, just to, just to review uh, pretty quickly, this is the standard that's used in universities nowadays. It's a pretty serious book. It's a kind of a huge book. It's over 600 pages. And it's got lots of musical samples in it, um, which is important, I think, for any orchestration manual. It spends a lot of time talking about the actual art of orchestration. Um, you know, what do people try to do? Um, how do they use those particular things I was talking about before? Um, Sam Adler doesn't use my little mantra of, um, of texture, balance, and function. But, um, <clears throat> but he does cover those topics in, in this book. And... I have to say I was I was really happy to own this after um, after owning many other orchestration manuals because I felt it sort of standardized things in a way which is great. Now I think I mentioned before that it also there's a danger in that um, Sam Adler has so brilliantly captured the craft of orchestration in this book that it it you know it seems to kind of cause a little bit of regimentation in the approach of orchestrators nowadays. Okay, so. Um, but anyways, I still like that book. I look up things because, in it, because not only is it, you know, sort of the final word on a lot of stuff, it sort of has a lot of state-of-the-art advice, um, which you're going to find when you look at other orchestration manuals. They talk about things like, oh, you know, the bassoon can't trill these two notes. Well, Sam Adler might say, well, you know, there's a new little, um, there's a little key on the bassoon now, and so now you can trill in that place. There's still no orchestration manual in the world that is as good as going and talking to players and getting their uh, players in an orchestra and getting their take on things. Um, I think that is the most important source of information about instrumentation. Now, <clears throat> before we get into these other books, I want to just say that that aside from Sam Adler and uh, a couple other things that I'll talk about, a couple other books that I'll talk about in a minute. Most orchestration books are chiefly instrumentation books. They describe what the instruments do. They give a couple of samples of the um, of the instrument used in an orchestral setting, and then you're kind of on your own. You have to go look it up in, a, you know, in a maybe a Dover score like this, Daphnis and Chloe. Okay, one of my favorite works. Okay, one of one of the great orchestral works of the 20th century. <clears throat> so. So that is the way that most orchestration manuals work. They really just tell you about the instruments. They don't actually tell you about orchestration itself, the art of putting things together. They just kind of tell you what instruments can do. And that kind of takes us to orchestration by Walter Piston, which was the standard for a long time. Now, both this book, Orchestration, and the Sam Adler, are intended to be used in universities um, as teaching materials. You know, that would be your main textbook for the semester or for, who knows, for your degree. Um, and it's pretty helpful, at, like at the end of each chapter it has like examples and it has like possible assignments, I think, that's for the teacher. Um, and, and it's good, but it, you know, it's, it's information is kind of stuck back in the 50s when it was written. Uh, so, so, I mean, I, I consider it to sort of be old faithful, you know. Okay, what's more about the piston is that um, it's just a little bit conservative in saying what's possible for instruments. And I think that that's actually a good thing for a beginning orchestrator. Um, you know, if, if you were to bring something to an orchestra and it's the first time that anybody has played your stuff, and it's a little workmanlike, a little pedestrian, but it gives all of the uh, players something to dig into, that would actually be better than if you brought a score to an orchestra that was daring, um, crazy, unplayable, okay, unplayable. So it's it's you know it's better to when you're first getting to know instrumentation and orchestration, it's better to aim low and to you know go for the character of the instrument. Now, one of the things that I think is really good in establishing that is some of the information that's in this book here, Anatomy of an Orchestra, uh, by Norman Del Mar. Uh, Norman Del Mar, I, I believe he was a uh, orchestration teacher, and it's it's interesting because it's 
organized more like um, I think it's organized more like a professor would organize a class um, in the way that it's in its approach like for instance um, he doesn't like divide he doesn't divide uh, things as usual like in, in a regular orchestration manual it'll say clarinets and then it'll say oh here's the bass clarinet there's the uh, piccolo clarinet there's the contrabass clarinet um, with this one he actually says nomenclature and species clarinets and that's all part of the woodwind group and and by sort of looking at the different sections of the orchestra and talking about what is general to all of them then talking what is specific to a particular instrument but general for that type of instrument like what's what's specific to um, you know to the clarinet section um, but general about all clarinets um, he really helps you think of the orchestra as a series of choirs okay so I, I just really feel that there's a lot of great information in here and there's some some good humored uh, British writing in this, you have some some sort of dry wit. So it's it's a great book, but I would say that you know it's not the end all of orchestration manuals. It's not even really a manual at all. It's a like what I would call a treatise. You know, a, a manual is something where you, like you go and you refer to it and you say, yeah, this can do that, and you go back to what you're working on. Um, a treatise is like a you know just sort of what I'm doing here. It's just expounding on things, uh, and he does that very well. We're, we're going back farther and farther in history. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Cecil Forsyth. Now this is a really, really fun book. I hope it's still in print. Uh, it's by Dover. And uh, Cecil Forsyth is... Um, <laughs> he must have been an amazing orchestration teacher. Um, he just... he really knows everything there is to know about orchestration in... I guess this is 1935. But I think the original edition was a little older than that. Um, you know, at the time that this book was written, people's heads were firmly stuck in Wagner, uh, Mahler, um, really rich uh, German Romantic music. And man, this guy knows a lot about that. So if you are thinking of writing huge, rich scores and, you know, you have that mindset of just really being over the top, and being a maximalist, you should read this book. Um, one of the things that I think is kind of amusing about it is almost every orchestration manual begins in the very practical way of telling you about which sections of the orchestra are more important than others. So the strings come first, and then the winds came, and then the brass come after that, and then the timpani uh, percussion come last, and then weird little um, intruders to the orchestra like harp and so on. Um, however, <clears throat> Cecil Forsyth goes for the gusto, and if you are a red-blooded um, sort of, uh, um, you know, very high-strung young composer, and you just want to get down to the to the nitty-gritty, he starts right with um, um, the percussion instruments and just really jumps into it with a lot of fervor. You know, his writing is just really imaginative and really gutsy, and he tells a lot of really funny jokes, a lot of um, interesting speculation about where he thought music was going. That's worth reading.